Hello everybody, my name is Brandon Hopkins. I run the Tech Hut YouTube channel, and for today, I'm gonna to be your the Node Developer Advocate. And what we're gonna be doing in this video is talking about Tilix, which is a fantastic tiling terminal emulator that you could go ahead and install on your Linux machine. Now, if you do anything at all with your the node instances, chances are you're SSHing into those servers and managing them via a local terminal on your system. Now, Tilix is gonna add a lot of different tools and features to make it more efficient and to just increase general productivity overall. Now here, this is an Arch-based system and I already have Tilix installed, but it's really easy to get depending on whatever distribution you're on. If you're on Arch, it's just pacman-s and Tilix. If you're on an Ubuntu system, it's just sudo apt install Tilix and so on and so forth. So getting right into the actual application, this right here is Tilix. And like I said, the one of the main draws of it is the tiling functionality. If we go ahead and first check out the general UI, if we look up here in the top left corner, we have an option to add a terminal to the right and add a terminal down. Clicking this will do what you think it would do to add a terminal over here, and we can add an additional terminal here. And it also has drag and drop functionality, so we could go ahead and grab and move these around and place them wherever we are going to work the most efficient. Now, if you're a little bit more keyboard centric, you can do this with hotkeys and all that, and we will be getting into that when we dive into the system settings. But just to show you real quick, if we go Control Alt A, it's gonna go ahead and open up another instance, and we could just keep doing that and keep doing that forever and ever, however many you need to have open. Now, in addition to this, you can have completely separate sessions. So if we look over here, we have two different buttons. We have the View Session sidebar and the Create New Session. If I go ahead and create a new session, it's gonna open up a new instance over here. And if we go down here to that uh, the View Session sidebar, it's gonna allow us to see all the different sessions that we have actively open. Now this is really nice. It prevents you from having a lot of different open windows everywhere. But even if you did want that, we can simply grab one of these, drop it out here and have a completely new window of Tilix. Now one of the really cool features with this is bookmarks. And this is one I use all the time, especially when connecting to Linode instances. We go down here, we have options to find things. We can read only or set the instance to read only. But here we have assistance. And from there we have bookmarks and we could go ahead and add a bookmark through this. So if I want to add a bookmark, you can add bookmarks to folders, paths, uh, various commands or remote. Now, if I go remote, I'm gonna give this a name. So I'm just gonna call it techhut.tv. That's my personal website that I host over on the node. And for the host, I could just go techhut.tv or just input your domain or whatever IP address is associated with your Linode instance. And then from here, I'm gonna go ahead and input my user. And then from there, I could hit okay. And now I went ahead and added that bookmark. Now I could just go control shift B to open up the bookmarks, select that bookmark, hit OK, and this is the first time I'm connecting to it, so I'm just gonna say yes, type in my password, hit enter, and now I'm gonna be connected to that Linode instance. And now that I've added it as a known host, I'm pretty sure I can just hit OK, and it's just gonna ask for my password right away. And now I'm connected to the same server in two separate terminals within the same window. And this is really nice, so if you're doing some intensive server work, like you're using it to render files, or you're building a database, whatever you may be doing, you could do something like open up htop on one side and then do whatever it is that you need to do in the other instance. And then if you need to go check to see how much storage you have left, you could simply open a bottom terminal like this. And then here we could type like df-h to check how much space is available in our system while all at the same time we are working in this window over here. Now if I go ahead and close some of these out real quick, I'm gonna close out this one and this one. Now in Tilix, if we go up here and we go over to this little hamburger menu here, we have a lot more options. So we could open up new windows through here. You have open, save, save as name, a synchronized input, which we're gonna be getting into in just a sec. But let's go ahead and check out the preferences. Here you have a lot of different global settings that you could go ahead and configure to match what just works best with your workflow. If we go over to appearance, you can change how the window styles look, how the session names look, and the actual titles. And then here we have Quake and the configurations to go with Quake. And Quake is really cool. Uh, we're gonna show you that real quick. If we go ahead and type uh, Tilix dash dash Quake, what that's gonna do is open a constantly persistent drop-down terminal that will be available to you at any given moment. Now, if you are interested in setting this up so you could go ahead and access it whenever you want, 
One thing you may want to do is go over to your keyboard settings, head over to shortcuts, and here you can go ahead and add a custom shortcut and we're gonna call this Tilix and for the command, we're gonna type in the same command we just typed in, so Tilix dash dash quake. Go ahead and add that. So once you do that, double click here and now we could do something like uh, window key F12. So super F12, close this out. And now whenever I hit super F12, you'll have quick access to your drop down terminal. And you saw in this menu under preferences where you could go ahead and actually configure that. And then if we move down, we have more bookmark options. So you could go ahead and add some more if you'd like to. That's the same kind of uh, setup that we saw earlier with the path, the various remotes and commands that you can go ahead and set up within this. So let's cancel out of there. Now here we have shortcuts and this is all the different hotkeys and everything that you could go ahead and view the defaults or change it to really whatever you would like. So over here, for example, you have a lot of uh, hotkeys that kind of work hand in hand with how tiling window managers work. So you could go ahead and resize the terminals in various directions with the various hotkeys, open save sessions, add terminals either automatically, which was that control alt A, or you could do specifically down or right with control alt D or R. And if we go down here, you have a lot more options under the actual terminals, such as options to like copy as HTML. So for example, double click on here, I could do like control alt H and that is that new hotkey. And then we have some encoding options, so you could go ahead and set that up however you want to. The uh, UTF Unicode is perfect for me. And then under advanced, we have some custom links options, and earlier we saw the default, and here you can see tabs of all the different profile specific options that we have within Tilix. And now one thing I wanna show you guys real quick is the command line actions. And what this is going to do is allow you to open a new terminal within your session by executing a certain command. And an example of this would be something like tilix a session add write, and we want to go ahead and execute, let's say htop. So hit enter, and then it's going to go ahead and execute that specific command over in a different terminal window. Now, if I go ahead and quit this out, for example, F10, it's going to completely close out that terminal. And with this functionality, you can do a lot of different commands. You could set up key bindings to make it a lot quicker. Overall, it is a really good tool. Now, what I wanna do is actually show you the synchronized input feature. So I'm gonna log into two separate Linodes real quick, just to kind of show you how you could go ahead and use that. So I just logged into a different Linode that is hosting my forms. And now what I could do is open up a new terminal over here, control shift B, log into this server, type in my password, just like that. And now I am managing two different Linodes. Now let's say you, there's a lot of different things that you could be doing. You could be installing same services on two different Linodes. Uh, you could be wanting to do updates and general server administrative tasks. And you are gonna do the same things on multiple servers. And that's when this feature comes in really handy. So if we go up here and we go to synchronize input, what that's gonna do is allow you to type these same things on both instances. So let's say I want to just update both of these systems. I could do sudo apt update, hit enter. And I do know that I have separate passwords on these. So one thing that I could go ahead and do is if we look up here, we have the option to temporarily disable the synchronization. So I could disable this over here, type in my proper password for this server, hit enter, disable this one. Let's go over here and type in this password. And now that I did that, I could go ahead and re-enable the synchronization because I am now sudoed and I'm not gonna have to type in my password again. So now I could do sudo apt upgrade to go ahead and upgrade both of these systems. Hit enter for yes. Now this server over here is taking a little bit of extra time. So let's say I wanted to, while I'm waiting, go ahead and manipulate things on my local system. All I would need to do is go ahead, open a terminal down. And then from here, I could go ahead and disable the synchronization on both of these. And let's say just I wanted to edit my .bash rc file. I could go ahead and do that mess around in here, do some local work while I wait for that to update. Or even while this is updating, I could go ahead and SSH into that instance. So I could go like this, type in that password, and then make sure that I'm not using up all of my system resources over here. So we go and type HTOP, and I'm using a lot of my CPU, so that's one of the reasons it might be taking a little bit of time. Some pretty heavy duty updates going on here. It looks like there's a lot of different things with a Docker and whatnot. All right, the update's complete. Let's go ahead and close out of this. Close out of this SSH instance, and I wanna go ahead and restart both of these servers at the same time. So then my whole website goes down instead of individual chunks and pieces. 
So now that we have the dual input synchronization, we could go ahead and type in sudo reboot. And then you see it went ahead and closed both of those connections. And now my website, all of it, including the different subdomains, are all rebooting at the same time. And when it comes to your specific use cases for this, there are a whole bunch of options. This was more of an introductory video. We barely scraped the surface on all the different things that Tilix can actually do. So below we will be linking to some different resources and documents that you could go ahead and go through to see if there's some additional functionality that may be beneficial for you in the work that you do. For me, my favorite use is just this managing multiple Linode instances at the same time while going back and forth between my local and SSH terminals. It's beautiful. And with that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you go ahead and check the link down below, you could go ahead and try all this out for yourself with a $100 60 day credit to go ahead and spin up your very own instance of Linode. Whether you want it to host game servers, websites, your own personal Nextcloud instance, basically anything that you'll, you're going to need a Linux server for, you can use Linode. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you do not miss out on the future content that will be coming out. With all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.